hit record, see if I remember what the hell I'm doing. Okay, uh, well, so Rewaz now has on-screen radio menus. Look at that. And also, I'm finally able to use the Vader 3 Pro, but even that's not perfect, because you'll notice that bullshit. That's unfortunate. It's getting, like, random disconnects with the dongle. I mean, like, it'll work, and then just stop getting input. They are saying that it might be a firmware issue, so in the meantime, use it wired, but that's a bummer. Hopefully they can figure that out, and it also does not have the trigger feedback yet, but really the, the meat of this is the radial menu, and that is pretty darn exciting. So what I would always recommend, I will link to this too, is they have a very robust guide, uh, you know, help feature on their website. So this explains all the features of the radial menu. There are some things that you can't do that I'm not too happy about. Let's just dive in here. So what I would like to use this for, at least how I was imagining it, you know, like I'm here working on my Star Citizen config. I'm clearly going to have a pretty meaty config here. I would like to have a menu be able to, I'd like to have it be able to jump me to ground vehicles, maybe make one like this one is mostly camera stuff so i could make it for camera controls the limitation is you can't use you can't bind layer slash shift changes in the radial menu and that that's a bummer but i don't i don't want to be negative i mean it is this is still a very, very impressive thing that we have an on-screen menu from a third party that's not relying on the game overlay, that's that's pretty big. But is also gonna have some limitations. Like, it's not gonna work if the game is in exclusive full screen mode. I'm actually curious to test a workaround for that. I'm wondering if borderless gaming would work. Let's first go into... How do you do it? Let's just start, start from scratch. It's this little icon up here. You got your radial menu. It is also always going to be a shift layer, so you could just jump straight to that if you want. Don't believe. I'm <laughs> now I'm just good old, good old rambling. Well, I know I haven't added anything to this. So, all right, we got her radio menu. Okay, yeah. So this is the default. It's gonna have it set to be the right stick will be your selections. These are the arrows. Bumper will be backing out. Trigger will be select, but. What's kind of cool is you can change all of this. So let's go back to the one that I was starting to fiddle with. We can click up here. Oh, you can't, I thought you could get, get to it. Right, so let's do that. Okay, so you can. See, <laughs> I'm kind of learning all this too. You click on the radial menu, it will put you into your radial shift. And then you're here. Let's uh, blow this up a little bit. So in here, you could click on radial menu. So now there's, you know, you have your choices to select. Back on your main layer, main sh shift layer. I don't really know what they prefer it be called. I kind of keep trying to say shift, just because I feel like that's the nomenclature that they use. Anyways, <laughs> you want to bind in how to get there. I was using the C button, so I just have a single press, shift mode, toggle, you could have it hold, toggle, taking me to my shift radial menu. Then on my shift radial menu, that will take me back. It's just, I don't even think I needed to bind that. Once you bind it on the main layer, it just knows you're probably going to want to use that same button, so it puts it in there. I have A and A to select, B to back out. Uh, you can do gyro, but it gets kind of funky. We'll, we'll do that just so I can show you. It doesn't feel like they tested gyro for this. So, okay, we have our, our navigations, but what's kind of cool here, too, is you can tweak this in any way you want, because this is just a separate layer, which I will go into a little bit later, like I was fiddling around with that. But let's dive in here. So if 
for right now, I just was playing around with this one combo, which if you're not familiar, if you want to bind in more than one press, click on combo, you can click record, and then that will just record whatever you do on the keyboard. So I wanted this to be a shortcut to my on-screen keyboard, which is left control, window, key, and O. So to show you what that looks like, I'm going to minimize this because it'll the overlay will look kind of weird. So we pull this up. Um, over in this, the corner here, this, this is an option. I'm doing this just for your sake so you can see the layer shift changes. Normally, I would not do that because that would drive me crazy. Oh, I'm still on my Star Citizen config. Apply. Okay, desktop config is active. C opens this up. See, this is gyro. <laughs> so it, yeah, like you could kind of use it, but uh, I would not. So I'm disabling the gyro. That's something I really do hope they update, give you a cursor and let you control it more fluently with the gyro. So yeah, so let me go, boom. Hey, look at that. Turn my gyro back on. Wow. Um, this was testing <laughs> the uh, character limit. You can fit a decent amount in there, but yeah. You do have some options. You can toggle it and you can turbo, uh, which I'm also, I was also having an issue with in the Star Citizen, Star Citizen config. Close on apply. That's a toggle. This is just your... If you want to move them, you can move them around. Or no, I'm sorry, that's adding new ones. Then this would be moving it, which you can also add new ones by clicking the plus and the plus. And then you might be noticing that one, like, what is that? That That is indicative of this arrow, which, boom, is your sub menu. So you can add up to 16 buttons here and then also, I believe the limit is eight. Yeah. Eight total on the ring. You can only go out one level, one ring, but you can start to see that <laughs> you can, you can add in a F load of stuff here. So let's go back, look over to this one. You got, whoops, you got icons. Now this confused me too. I'm like, oh, there's only, this is it. No, this is a scroll. It's just so tiny. Oh, okay. There's a there's a decent amount. Whoa, look at that. I literally, literal years, I've been asking for Steam input to add in numbers and letters. So that's that's nice to see. Yeah, so you can add in your icon. You can change the color. One just very minor thing I like is depending on the color, it'll invert the icon. To make it more clear, that's hey, it's it's the little things. That's a nice touch. You know, then you'd add in your add in your title, but yeah, you'll notice we don't have our shift, which is ugh, frustrating for me. Close the on exit. All right, just press B to close it. Or this could be a hold, and then it would let it. It would close it as soon as I let go. Nothing too crazy there, but that that is like, ugh, that's <laughs> that gives you a lot of freaking options. So okay, you got you bind your stuff in up here on this radio menu preference. You have this screen also. Delay the controls before switching to another layer. That can be useful. That basically would just um, think of that as like fire end delay. That's it. Right? That's what it's called in Steam. Jeez, it's been so long since I've used Steam Input, I'm starting to forget. The Tinted, this is really the only option you have. Which, I mean, you might think you want it, like, this doesn't look too bad to make it totally opaque, but... I don't know why that... this... <laughs> this bothers me. I don't like how dark that is. I wish it was just under whatever. I mean, I, I get why. It would be a pain in the ass to try to get it to dynamically adjust to the size of all the of all the buttons. 
but you can change the opacity, no big deal. Um, if you just want to go back to default, boom, that was the default. I think I like it around 50. Automatically open up the submenu after a delay. So if you don't want to have to click, and then you can adjust the time for that. Let's go 600, see what that feels like. Turn off the gyro. Okay. So boom, 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 boom. That was That's pretty quick. I didn't have to click anything, it was just a hover over. Can't go back on a release, you'd have to press back. Which, eh, whatever. Let's try 900. Even that feels pretty quick. Like, I would want to be able to hover over it and read the description before it opened. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> play with that to your heart's content. I'm going to leave that off. And then you just have the size. That's pretty tiny. But then this is really cool, too. You could change which monitor it opens up on. That's, uh, that's pretty, pretty snazzy. I'm just curious how, <laughs> how small that is. A little bit of a bummer right now also is that you can't change the position. It's just going to be centered. Has some limitations, but is still doing some really cool things. Now let's go to what I was working on. My uh, legacy here. <laughs> Someday I'll actually finish this. I was actually starting to retweak the one I had was making from the Vader 2 because the Vader 3, you know, I had three buttons here on the Vader 2. This one doesn't, but it's still like I can make do. I just have to shuffle things around. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about. So the issue that I can't switch shift layers. This is not really a method. I don't know. Let's let me just uh, see what you think about this. So, OK, you know, I've got social stuff. Uh, let me minimize. All right. So we got our social stuff, you know, FOIP toggle, audio channels, toggle chat, which I can't get this proximity toggle to work correctly. We'll have to, I'll explain what's happening there. Regardless, that's not even what I'm talking about. So for shift layers, I can't make these buttons do the shift, but I can add that command onto that shift layer. So does this make sense? I'm saying like physically press X button to go to ground vehicles, Y button to go to camera controls. So if I press that, you see on that corner, it said ground vehicle is active and my color changed. So we're in the ground vehicle set. I get out of the seat in the vehicle that unloads it. Now we're back to main. Then I could open this back up. So go, I want some camera controls. Press Y for camera controls. Physically press the Y button. If I, this will do nothing if I apply. You have to press Y. RB hold, which is the camera stuff for now and it's blue. So, I mean, I still have to like tweak that around a little bit, but that is, that's a workaround. I mean, I just came up with that last night while I was testing some things and hoping I'd be able to find time to record something here. And I can show you what uh what I did here. It really isn't anything too crazy. Uh, toggle that off. So yeah, all I did was gave these both release presses. X has a release press to go to shift four, which is ground vehicles. Y has a release press to go to shift three, which is right now RB hold, which is mostly all my camera stuff. So it works. I'm not sure how elegant of a solution that is. I feel like that's kind of some crazy glue duct tape kind of stuff, but I don't know. I'm curious what, what you would think of that. Does that seem like a, does that make sense? Basically, I mean, the goal is if you're using this config, I don't want you to have to spend all of your time studying how to use it. I want it to kind of make sense. So this is giving you the clue, basically just giving you the control guide. Like, hey, if you want to switch this stuff, press X, press Y. I can kind of give you little controller hints on screen, which really, I mean, shit, man, I, you could take that even farther. Like I could, you 
could make a whole control guide of just little shortcuts like this. I don't know. Let's check out these icons. Specifically for the gaming ones, right? So you have face buttons, A, B, X, uh, Y, yeah, okay, PlayStation. So that's really it. Until I have access to being able to put in my own icons, or they would add all of the controller stuff, regardless. So just the one other, one other issue I was having was like, so this toggle will work. I toggle it, it pulls up my game chat. But this one, as a combo, doesn't seem to work for the toggle. And I played around with different things in here. I'm not sure if it's a Star Citizen thing or something fussy with Rewaz. Yeah. So just so you know what I'm talking about, let's hop into Star Citizen and I'll just show this all working. Okay, there we are. You can see. Oh, wait. You can't see that. Oh, that's going to be interesting. That's how I'm capture recording the game. So that's a that's effing interesting. I'll have to play around with that. So for right now, the, the capture may not be great because I'm just doing monitor capture, but this should let me show. Oops, wrong button. Yes, okay, so you are seeing that stuff now. Huh. Yeah, that's uh that's interesting. Okay, so test, yes. Um Get away from whatever is causing me to shake. Oh, for crying out loud. Stop shaking. That is going to drive me insane. Uh, I think there's a place to land here. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was a little bit of a distraction, so... What I want to show you is like, why the F's it keeps, oh, I know what's happening. It's inheriting the stick has boost on the very high top end. And that's what is shaking the ship. It's, it's inheriting that. How do I get that? Maybe that'll work? No, that's freaking weird. It shouldn't be boosting. So, all right, just to explain to you what's happening. So on this, my main layer, it's that. I have forward all the way is left shift, but in this shift layer, it shouldn't really be doing that. What if I left stick high up to do not inherit. Maybe? <laughs> I have no idea. That's why I don't really do... Ooh, that did it. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's... That's why I haven't really done a bunch of Rewaz videos. I'm still learning. So okay, that worked. that's cool. I figured that out. Anyways... Holy crap. All I was trying to show, as you can see, on the, um... The prox, prox comms over there on the left, upper left. I can toggle that off and on. VoIP chat. So VoIP chat can be turned on and it's just toggled right now. Um, the issue with that would be, I mean, that key is going to be held down the entire time. I don't think that's a modifier, but see here, it's like, strobing it so i'm guessing my voice would be chopping out but also the issue with that being a toggle uh let me turn it off the issue with that being a toggle would be it is left alt and number pad plus so it would be toggling left alt so then like if you pressed tab you're alt tabbing so that's that's a if people get into some robust controller input remapping, that's always it's always a frustration, is things like that. Because there's things in Star Citizen where I might be holding Alt on the keyboard, and then F4 changes views. Well, you just Alt F4 and close the game, which 
has happened to me. Anyways, back to what we're talking about. So, that's working. Yeah, I got my uh, head tracking stuff down here for when I'm using the Toby Eye Tracker. Uh, these I've tested and they work. We are, I already demonstrated that. So yeah, with that, that toggle, it's something I can't figure out. If I make this a hold, like it's not even an option. I have to change that. Then I can hold until release, which I could do, but it would be nice to be able to make it a toggle. I think that might just be some weird limitation with this toggle. I, I don't know. What I'll ultimately probably have to do is just change this binding something different in the game. But that's neither here nor there. This is just an overview of the radio menus. Uh, they're pretty cool. They have some limitations, but it still is a really nice thing. Really nice new little tool to play around with. I'm just, just really hoping that I wouldn't have to do something like this. Let me just assign a shift layer change right into this button. Like, he, like that's... More, more options <laughs> is really what I will always ask for. Instead of just being a simple binding, like, come on, let me do a... Let me do a regular press. Let me do a long press. You know, it can be built, but what is here right now is very cool. Opens up a lot of options. It's not dependent on, like, Steam overlay, like Steam input is, which isn't a huge deal for a lot of people, but like for me with Star Citizen, I didn't have to do anything. I just run it and it works and I get my menus and that's great. People that have been here for a long time, you know that I've I've struggled a lot trying to get the on-screen menus to work from Steam input in Star Citizen. I eventually had to abandon my configs that had touch menus. So yeah, that's uh, I think that's it. And I apologize if this was a little extra rambly. I have not had time to record, so it's all coming out right now. This is like my therapy. That was kind of a weird way to end it. <laughs>